Really sharp turn. Okay, all right, all right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good everything. Welcome to Tesla's Wild. My name is Colin. I hope you all are having a great day. If you're new to the channel, I'm so glad you found us. I hope you enjoy what you see here and I hope you stick around for future videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It truly means the world to me and you guys are the absolute best. Uh, only one reminder, down below there is a comment that's pinned that has timestamps so you can hop through the video and view the portions most relevant to you. I got the 2019.20.1 software update for my Tesla Model 3. got it a few days ago. The only release notes that this came with was dog mode improvements. However, I think this should have come with more because I've noticed that it's improved quite a few bugs around the vehicle, so I kind of wanted to go over what bugs this software update has improved, as well as take it up Deer Creek Canyon, that same road, and see if there's any improvements to Tesla Autopilot as well, and see if there's any improvement over 2019.16.2. This sounds interesting to you, make sure you stay tuned, and we'll see you guys shortly. All right, so here we have the release notes, the what's new in this update for 2019.20.1. As we can see, the only improvements are dog mode improvements. So let's first start with the reverse camera or the backup camera. With all of these updates for a while now, I've noticed a delay in the feed of the reverse camera making it to this screen. In the past, it's taken like three to 10 seconds for the reverse camera to show up. But in this update, it shows up very, very quickly. So we're gonna show that now. I have not used reverse at all today. Let's flip it into reverse. Very, very slight delay. So this was about maybe a half a second or a second, which is vastly improved from previous load times for the reverse camera feed. So this is so one thing that has not been improved on this update is in the visualization here, and this may be a misunderstanding on my part, but this visualization has a white dot in the rear middle of the vehicle. And when I put it into reverse, We'll see that show up. You can see that there's this white dot. I can't tell if that's supposed to be like the sun reflecting, if it's Tesla being, you know, clever with the way that, you know, I don't know, but it is there and it has not improved on 2019.20.1. All right, so one of the things that has always been a constant struggle in this vehicle is having your phone as a key. It's a really, really cool idea, but the implementation is a little bit troublesome at times. So I've heard all sorts of different theories that the phone needs to be unlocked, that it needs to be in your front pocket. I personally wear skinny jeans, so putting an iPhone XS Max in my front pockets is kind of uh, terrible. So I always keep my phone in my back pocket. I do notice that it is much more reliable when the phone is a front pocket. Pocket, but what we're going to try doing is throwing the phone in my back pocket and see if the doors will unlock. Still no improvement on that. So now what I'm going to do is move it into my front pocket, still fully locked, not awake, anything. It's in my front pocket. And it works just fine. So the phone does not need to be unlocked or awake for this to happen. It can be fully locked and fully sleeping. As long as it's in your front pocket, it has a much better time communicating with the vehicle for whatever reason. So another improvement that I've noticed on 2019.20.1 over 2019.16.2 is the home link button. The home link button was regularly failing. When you hit the home link button normally, there's a set of Wi-Fi bars that will show up showing that it's sending a signal. For whatever reason on 2019.16.2, this would go away and it just wasn't there. And the only way to fix it was to do the two button reset on the steering wheel. That has gone away completely in 2019.20.1. I have not had it at all have not run into any sort of issues and it's been very very reliable and as we see that button works just fine no failing or anything like it used to all right, so the next thing that I wanted to test is Tesla's emergency lane departure avoidance. After driving with ELDA quite a few times and for um, a while, I started noticing some problems with it, just some bugs, and then it was like over aggressive. It seemed almost situational. It was always on this exact same road that I'm gonna take you guys to now. I have been driving with this for about a week now, and I can tell you that there is a vast improvement, but I wanna kind of simulate the exact same scenarios as I did a couple videos ago where I said Tesla ELDA has problems and see if we can um, either replicate those or see if they're gone. Just for verification, I want you guys to see that I do have ELDA on. 
and off we go. This is the same road. It seemed to always fail on this road in particular. I'm not sure what about this road, but even when I was purposely steering off-road, I had people say that, no, it only interacts when you're drifting off-road, but I was purposely steering off-road and it was correcting, uh, saying that a collision was imminent. So we're gonna try just drifting. Same, so no problems there. I believe the first time happened up near these trees here, so we're just gonna try slowly drifting over. Nope, nothing there. How about just turning over? No problems there. Maybe they've gone too far the other direction because it uh, wasn't doing anything and I got pretty close to the edge of the road. We'll see in the video there. Nope, nothing there. How about in here? Nope. How about turning here? Nothing at all, huh, interesting. All right, and now this is where it was just freaking out for whatever reason. No, nope, no at all. So those problems have been fixed, but maybe too far in the other direction. Uh, it didn't notice anything there and I was trying to make it as much as just a drift off as possible as opposed to turning off of the road. As we can see, it is definitely still turned on. So emergency lane departure avoidance was on, but it wasn't interfering at all there. All right, so the last bug that I wanna go over has to do with Homelink here. So Homelink going forwards into my driveway, going towards my garage works beautifully. Uh, no problems whatsoever. However, when I reverse into the driveway, Homelink fails completely. I don't know what it is, but when I'm reversing into the driveway, it just cannot judge the distance for some reason. It knows how far I am until I start reversing into the driveway and the distance just doesn't go down anymore for whatever reason, I'm not sure why. Going to pull into the driveway, we see the home lake come up. I have it set at 40 feet. So we are pulling in forward. It's now down to 10, 5, and the bell goes off and the garage opens without fail. All right, so we're going to drive away and do a little loop around the neighborhood here and hopefully simulate this curring. We'll see if it's been fixed. Okay, so on this time, we're going to back into the driveway and hopefully show either it working or it not working. Most likely it won't work. I have filed a couple bug reports regarding this issue. However, um, I don't know if it's been addressed or if anybody else has even noticed that this is occurring. Okay, so we do see that Homelink has popped up. It's currently saying that in 20 feet it will open. Okay, so it now says 30 feet it will open. So we are backing down the driveway. We can see that the garage is still closed. 30 feet, still 30 feet, still 30 feet, still 30 feet, still 30 feet. So there we go. We are like literally a couple feet from the driveway. It still says that we are auto open in 30 feet and it just won't open. So. That bug has not been fixed, but a variety of others have, which is really great but news. This is the same road that we usually do autopilot tests on. This is Deer Creek Canyon. I'm gonna take you guys on a bunch of other roads, but for consistency's sake, I wanted to do it here. All right, so we have it all set up here. Uh, we're gonna set it at 35, which is the speed limit. As you guys may recall, this is a poorly marked road, but it does pretty well through here. As always, I have my hands ready to take over at any time. The reason that I keep my hands off of the steering wheel in general is to show you guys that I am absolutely not interfering with the vehicle in any sort of way. Um, it's just the best way. Not too bad with that biker there. Stayed pretty far away.
Whoop. Okay. <laughs> And I will time lapse this. I just like to do that first section because it's poorly marked and has some curves, but uh, I'll time lapse this up until the curvy part starting now. All right, so coming into this turn, it is slowing itself down. We're set at 40 and it's gone all the way down to 30. So that is an improvement, if I recall correctly. Definitely an improvement over last time. Pretty sharp right turn here. Not too bad. Down to 30, sharp turn here. With cars coming and a beautiful Porsche. So I do have it set at 40, which last time I had it set at 35, so we're going to see how that impacts this. Pretty nice sharp turn coming up here. A couple videos ago when I took this road and had it set at 40, it was really, really struggling on a lot of these turns. Um, it was definitely going to overshoot them and definitely going to fail, and we haven't had an episode of that yet here, so that's pretty cool. Woo! Okay, all right. That was a bit of a fail, but it did figure it out and did not go over the line. I think it just came into that turn a little bit too hot. Seems like it's really biased towards this center line, at least a lot of these maybe because it's right turns. Not bad. But it never seems to get as close to the right line on sharp left turns. I'm not sure why that is, but it seems to hug this left line a bit more. All right, so this turn scares me because it's a rock wall. But it has absolutely no trouble, which is awesome. Sharp turn. Oh my goodness gracious. Really sharp turn. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Not too bad. So last time I stopped it from doing that. All right, got autopilot back on. So last time I stopped it from getting that far, but I did want to see exactly what happened in that situation. Uh, it didn't fail terribly, and it just came into that turn maybe a bit too hot. See how well it does. Wheel is at 90 degrees. Oh, a little bit on that yellow line, but not too bad. It slowed itself down a lot. So last time I had to quickly scroll this wheel down to 20 miles per hour. There wasn't anybody in front of me, so that may have contributed a little bit, but um, that was interesting nonetheless. And just as last time, we're coming up to the end. So we're gonna get pulled over and we're gonna move on to some more testing here. All right, so there we have it. As I said, I was just gonna kind of go over some bugs, the Tesla software, and see if 2019.20.1 has fixed any of them. Uh, as we saw, quite a few of them actually were fixed. 
So the kind of things that we went over in this video to see if they're fixed, we went over emergency lane departure avoidance, which has obviously been fixed. It maybe went too far the other direction because I couldn't set it off no matter what I did, even letting the car drift or purposely turning and making the car go out of the lanes. The home link button is fixed. The phone key reliability is maybe about the same. Two out of three times within my back pocket, it worked. Two out of two times with it in my front pocket, it worked. So it does not need to be unlocked, it does not need to be awake, it just needs to be, I don't know, uninhibited. So the communication with the phone and the car needs to be uninhibited. The white dot on the visualization is still there. Not sure what that is. The backup camera display seems to come through a lot quicker. In all cases, I've seen it, it's been, it is still black at the very beginning, but it seems like it comes through in a half a second or a second or less. We also went in and looked at home link in reverse. I don't know if this is a known issue. It's not a big problem, obviously, because um, all you do is just open up the home link menu and hit the button and it works fine, especially now that that's not a problem. As I said, I've filed a couple bug reports regarding this and it doesn't seem like they've quite gotten to it. It's probably not very high on their priority list and I don't blame them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Uh, we also did a bunch of autopilot on that exact same road. I wanted to do that for consistency. I'm going to take you guys all over Colorado and do some really cool roads and see how autopilot handles them, as well as some spirited driving. But as far as testing autopilot, I think we need a baseline and I think that road is a good road to test on. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to smash that like and subscribe button down below. It does truly mean the world to me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. As always, I have a lot of new content coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned and we will see you next video.